Today on JTV, we're taking viewer requests, and our fellow U Bloomer Brad Harrington sent in a request to see how to use the Gala Bouquet Holder to create a wonderful cascade bouquet. We'll show you the technique today, and it's easy as pie. So let's get started with our easy to make cascade bouquet. The reason it's easy to make is because we're creating it in the Gala Bouquet Holder. I've chosen the clear one today, and that's going to make this bouquet as easy as pie. Because we're able to design 360 degrees in this bouquet holder, it makes those cascade placements extremely easy. I've chosen the clear. There's two sizes, the large and the small. We'll work with the large today. So the first thing we need is a soaked gala bouquet holder. I've placed it into our moss stand to hold it for designing. This is also a great way for us to use it for display. We created this in another JTV webisode, so you can go back in the archives and check out exactly how to make the moss stand. The first thing we have to do with this bouquet is define the shape of it, and we'll do that using greenery. I've got some beautiful fern truss foliages we'll use for that today. We'll start with Italian ruscus and some aspidistra leaves. My very first placement is going to be the longest placement that's going to go all the way down the bouquet and define the length of the cascade itself. The first placement that we're going to make goes into the foam in one of the lower design ports, which allows us to create a cascade that goes all the way down. We're going to mirror that same placement with a secondary placement right next to it. By placing those two together, we've reinforced the cascade that goes down the front of the bouquet. And it doesn't make it look like a singular tail. It starts to taper the bouquet in that direction. Next, we'll start with a smaller aspidistra leaf and bring that off the back side. The purpose behind this is for carrying, and notice how that starts to shield the bride's arm and allows our cascade to drape all the way down the front. We'll mirror that placement with a second aspidistra leaf. Next, I use a great trick I learned from Phil Rolota. Taking my aspidistra leaf and bending the stem over and piercing it directly through the leaf so that I've got a loop and I can place that directly into the bouquet. I'm going to do the same thing with the second leaf. This adds interest to the bouquet and also allows me to conceal the gala bouquet holder. That foliage is going to prevent people from seeing through there, and the placements of my flowers will actually go right through the leaf itself. So this has defined the shape of the bouquet itself. It's going to cascade all the way down the front and wrap up over the top and back down the back side. So our next placement is flowers. chosen two types of flowers, a spray aster from Golden and these beautiful white dendrobiums from Amy's Orchids. Those work as a cascade on their own. The great thing about Amy's Orchids is the length that you actually get on dendrobiums. Always make sure that the dendrobiums and orchids you're receiving have a length below the last flower of 6 to 10 inches. That way you know it's the most premium orchid and that they're as fresh as they can possibly be. If you have one that's very short, it means it's been cut several times before it actually got to you. That's one of the things that Amy guarantees about her wonderful orchids. So our placements of these orchids are going to be in the front of our bouquet. They're gonna angle their way 
back up so that they start at the bottom and they start to come over the top. We'll repeat that same method on the back side. Now I can also shorten up orchids by taking an orchid and cutting between the blossoms themselves so that suddenly I have two pieces. And those two pieces allow two placements with beautiful orchids on each one. One like this without a point on the top is great for the center of the bouquet. We can use those tails of orchids to much effect to direct our eye back down over the back side. Now using those orchids, you'll notice I place that directly through the leaf itself and into the gala bouquet holder. Again, right here, right through that leaf and into the artesia base. The great part about this bouquet holder is you'll notice our placements are able to go in on the bottom side of the bouquet itself, which allows those stems to come out and form a fabulous cascade very easily and efficiently. We're not running into a plastic back. We're not having to worry about little small ports on the back side of it. With our gala bouquet holder, we have huge areas for design. And those are positioned so that we can have flowers and foliage placements that can come directly down and be parallel to the handle itself. That's the brilliance behind using this bouquet holder. Our spray asters can also be used to create a great tail and extend it even further. Because we have huge length on this stem, we're able to create a cascade that's that long. Now a lot of people worry about these falling out. There's a couple different things that you can do. I like using Oasis Cold Adhesive. and placing some cold adhesive right on the end of the stem itself. I put it all around the stem when I have a cascading shape like this. And then I can place it directly into the foam. So with that glue, I go right up and inside the bouquet holder itself. That glue is going to attach itself directly to the foam and secure that in place. It's great to do that for a few of these initial placements. There's also another way that we can lock the stems in place at the end of our design using stem lock. That way we've created our design and we simply go back over everything and lock the stems in place using stem lock. This works great any time we have a weighted flower that's going to be inverted in the design itself. So we start to get that cascade coming down. Now again, I can split this up into a couple different placements as well so that we have a great top 
of our spray aster sticking up here, and then the laterals themselves can be separated, or we can use the piece like that. These short lateral pieces can be added throughout our design to integrate the spray asters with the other flowers we're seeing. So now we've defined the shape of our entire bouquet using our spray asters and dendrobiums. We're ready to put in focal flowers that are going to bring this to life. So our next placement is going to be roses. I have some beautiful Polar Star and Akito roses from Euphoria, but we're going to step it up a notch today and make them even more beautiful by adding some Crystallina glitter, a special halogen glitter treatment that'll put a sparkle just on the very edges of the roses themselves. We'll do this technique to the Polar Star roses. Crystallina is a special halogen glitter created by the Floracraft Corporation and it looks really great, especially on white flowers, because it gives it a special iridescent quality. Now I know, glitter on roses, Jay, you think you've gone too far, but trust me on this one. This looks really cool. We start with Design Master TAC 2000, and we spray lightly over the rose itself. Remembering to stay back about 10 to 12 inches so that we don't freeze the rose with the propellants from the adhesive. Then taking that adhesive, coated rose, and dipping the edges gently into the crystallina as we turn and roll it. Now look at that. How incredible. It gives us a great halogen treatment and that little reflective quality still sits back off of the backdrop of the Polar Star Rose itself. We'll do a couple more. I actually learned this technique from my mom when I was a little kid. We would use glitter glue from Design Master and spray it on carnations or roses and then roll them in the glitter. All great ideas come back around again another time. So now, those have that wonderful iridescent sparkle and the holographic glitter just reflects all different tones and shades. I'm just doing it to the Polar Star and not to the Aikido, so we've got a good contrast. We could do too much of this too and it wouldn't be attractive to have everything coated in glitter. So we cut our roses and we're sticking those directly into the foam. I've placed two roses together to reinforce the impact that they create. One rose is strong, but two of them together creates an even stronger impact. We'll take one and add it down at the front of the cascade. And one more. even lower at this end. When I was a kid, one of the challenges in creating a cascade bouquet was that all of the pieces and components had to be wired together. 
they would all be wired together into a tail that came out of the center of the bouquet. While that's artistic and extremely creative and almost a lost art, it isn't a price effective way for us to work with. It costs too much labor and too much time and wiring those flowers gives them no water source. So with this Gala Bouquet holder, we're able to make those wonderful cascading placements and still have a water source for our flowers. Those six roses travel up the bouquet and over the back side. My next step is to use the Aikido and add those. This helps complete and define the arrangement itself. Placing that rose right there brings it out of the center of the bouquet, but notice how there's almost a hole there. The same way I reinforced those two roses, I'll reinforce another Aikido rose right there. have these amazing white lilies from Rosaflora and we'll add those to the bouquet. Notice how that fills in between all our other flowers. You can use a bud. We've got one that's going to cascade and we'll add that one right in the front of the bouquet. One more on this side. two of our buds towards the back. Notice how all of those flowers start to feed together and create our focal area at the very front of the bouquet. We can't ever forget about the back side of the bouquet too. Right now you're looking at the back side, but remember that's what the bride's going to be looking at all day long. So we want to have some flowers there for her to see as well. So she's not looking at the back of a bouquet. And one more final long lily placement. We want to bring that up so that it falls between those two flowers. We're always assuring in our cascade that flowers are laying on a different plane and none are directly across from each other.
Now we'll add some white spray roses. These are some of my favorites. It's an incredible white spray rose from Eufloria called Snowflake. I love them because as they open up, each of these individual rose floret blossoms starts to look like a miniature gardenia. It's a great textural difference for the bouquet. We're using these almost like filler flowers because we're filling in between our other flower placements with the spray roses. Looking at our bouquet, we've added spray roses here, here, and here. The other placement that we need to make is one right here. So we simply go back up into one of the design ports on the bottom of the gala bouquet holder and add that rose stem. I want one that extends even further down. So I'll add that one in the same way. Now we've completed that cascade and all the flowers are starting to flow together. The next flower we're gonna add is Stephanotis, but we're gonna add it in a very unconventional way. This is Eufloria Stephanotis, and it's absolutely exquisite. You know how I talk about Eufloria being the prettiest roses on the planet? The Stephanotis is the prettiest Stephanotis on the planet. It's grown under the same conditions and with the same conviction in California. We're gonna add it using lily grass. So we'll take and sharpen the end of the lily grass itself. We take the Stephanotis blossom and break it off. As we break off those Stephanotis blossoms, they separate very easily from the stem itself. Then we're able to take this and push it through there. What that's gonna do is knock out the little calyx on the inside, and then we can slide the bare grass through the Stephanotis. Again, we place it in there, just gently push, and that expels the calyx on the inside. Now I'm gonna make two different ones. Same method again, we'll break off the Stephanotis themselves, We'll take our longest piece of lily grass and sharpen that end. And I'm going to kick that calyx out the same way, but then I'm going to turn the blossom around and send the blossom down that direction. We're going to use these as part of the cascade, so I want to make sure that the Stephanotis is flowing in the right direction. I can't go into it this way because that calyx would prevent it from being pushed out. So I've got to push it out from the back side and then invert that Stephanotis and bring it down. Now 
Now we're ready to add these to the bouquet. These two that we just created are gonna go down the front of the bouquet and actually become part of our cascade. You'll notice that I kick them off to one side so they have an asymmetrical balance to the bouquet itself. The other ones will place in the side of the bouquet. We're going to put two in one side. And one in the other side. We'll need some decorative wire to finish this off. We'll simply take some apple green wire. Bend that in half and in half another time. And then take the end and wrap that around the end of the lily grass. The reason that we're doing this is to create something that we can insert directly into the foam. Let me show you it again one more time. You can use a wood pick or you can use wire. I like to use the decorative wire so in case it's seen in any way, shape, or form, we've covered it by making it decorative. We layer that over four times. We lay it on the end, and then we just take the extra piece of that wire and wrap it around the outside of that. We can take and trim that off. Now we've got a hard piece we can take up and around and insert directly into the foam. And we can adjust those stephanotis so they fall in exactly the right spot. The reason that I added two on one side and one on the other side is so that they'll be going two separate directions through the bouquet so that all my stephanotis isn't going one direction. And they make a nice crisscross across the top of the bouquet. That's a beautiful cascade bouquet. Now, our final touch to make sure this is gonna last as long as it possibly can for the bride is to use Chrysler Professional Glory and coat the entire bouquet front and back. It ensures that our flowers are gonna last 20 to 30% longer and because it's water-based and it dries clear, it's not going to affect our glitter at all. So there we have it, a beautiful cascade bouquet, easy as pie, all thanks to the Gala Bouquet Holder and the techniques you learned here today at JTV. Until next week, keep having fun with flowers.